Hi, I'm Jason Ephraim, Campus Director for Digital Crafts Houston. We're Coding Bootcamp, and welcome to our YouTube channel. This is the second video and informational series that we're going to be doing of common questions and things that people run into when they're looking at coding boot camps, dealing for everything from what you can expect, how to look for the right one, what you might learn, uh, how to go about uh, completing your course, job opportunities, and things like that. Uh, before we get too deep into this second video, I just ask you if you're interested at all in coding boot camps to please subscribe to our YouTube channel down below. Just click there and you'll always be updated on any new information that we give out. But uh, for this video, uh, another common question that we get from people is how they prepare, how best to prepare for a coding boot camp. There's a lot of unknowns going into this. Uh, it's unlike universities, coding boot camps are still relatively new, so people don't really understand what to expect. They might get a good idea of what they will learn in the course, but what do you need to have to come into it? And it does change from coding boot camp to coding boot camp, depending on what they're looking for. But as far as digital crafts, we do begin with the beginning. We do start with basic HTML, CSS, go through, get to more advanced front end technology, get into computer science and programming, start dealing with JavaScript and Python, using GitHub and all different types of tools. Uh, so we get very deep into it very quickly. And that's one of the reasons why it's very important to come in with a good uh, foundation. Uh, part of that is completing pre-work, which almost any coding bootcamp will have. Digital crafts, we send it out once you're admitted into our program. Uh, and you have plenty of time to complete that. Usually takes a couple weeks of some, some dedication and some self-learning to go through. The, the reason behind this isn't so much that people expect you to come into a coding boot camp with a really good knowledge of everything you're going to be covering anyway. What it is is to give everybody a good foundation and, and at least a little bit of familiarity with the concepts that you'll be covering to make the course a bit easier and to enable you to have a bit more flexibility and time to really polish up your projects and start figuring out exactly what type of job you might want or what you'd like to do with the skills that you learn and start tailoring what you're working on since you'll have a good basic understanding in the, fu the fundamentals. So before going into a coding boot camp, if you haven't gotten into it and you haven't gotten any pre-work, what can you do? And that's a very common question when we first start the interview process with potential students. One of the best things you can do is take some of those online learning courses, which many people that come to us have already started. Things like Free Code Camp, uh, Code Academy, Udemy, there's a treehouse. There's, there's a ton of them out there. I really don't focus too much on what's the absolute best one. Find one that suits your learning style, that has a good beginner track and goes at a speed that you can take and understand. Most of them will have some sort of in-browser uh, editor, uh, ways that you really don't need a lot of tools or really need to spend anything to get in there. And what you're looking for is to not get a really, really strong uh, grasp on the languages themselves. You'll be led through a lot of these exercises and. Uh, Honestly, the retention coming out of them, it, it is pretty good, but you will have a difficult time taking what you just learned and transforming it into creating solutions from scratch if you're challenged to. Uh, the only time that really changes, I do know because we do help co-organize the Houston Free Code Camp meetup group here, is that when you get into the more advanced, it does start encouraging you to go out and start working on uh, submitted open source projects and volunteer projects and things like that. And that can be a great way to get a good foundation. Those courses are also really important because it lets you know what you could expect to work with these languages. If you enjoy working on the screen, working and working through algorithms and doing things like uh, while loops and working through arrays and trying to come up with solutions. It also uh, really lets you get, have a good idea if you have the, the capacity to go through and, and recall how to do things over and over and over again. It gives you a good idea of how much quicker and how much more readily available those tools are to you as you continue to use them. Beyond that, uh, it's really up to you. There are lots of great books out there. We include two in our pre-work that we encourage our students to use that actually came from students coming in saying that these re resources helped them out a lot. Uh, if you'd like, you can absolutely reach out to me and I'd be happy to let you know about those. Uh, but they are very, very great tools. They're more exercise-oriented books as opposed to just reading. And that's really conducive to a coding boot camp style of education where you're not just going to be reading, lecture, and then maybe at the end you'll be challenged to use these tools, understanding every bit in the inside and outside of them. Very early on, you'll get a very basic overview of how to use something, then immediately challenged how to dig in and actually start building something using it. And so that's why it's important to get an idea of like some of these uh, lessons and courses and stuff that challenge you to build and learn by building are really important uh, because it'll let you know if it's a learning style that you'd enjoy. Beyond that, it's also a great idea to start getting involved in local groups and events. Uh, Meetups.com is a great place to find uh, lots of 
either language specific or programming in general, lots of different groups that, that deal with these languages professionally or just as a hobby. Uh, there's also lots of stores that host meetup groups. I know our Microsoft store here and our Apple store both host uh, meetup groups from time to time. Co-working spaces are another great place uh, if you can look up on their calendars and events and see if there's anything coming up where they might have people coming in to talk about development languages. And for the big part, uh, unless they specify in their event descriptions, most of them expect that there are going to be lots of beginners and people showing up with little to no understanding of these languages. But it's a great way for you to get in and start learning about the industry before you really uh, commit to the, the monetary, the time, and maybe even leaving your job to join a coding boot camp like ours. So that's a lot of the pre-work that you can get out of it. But some of the stuff that you might not quite expect uh, that, that's very important that we include, at least in the pre-work, but we encourage everybody else is uh, familiarization with your device, uh, especially if you have a coding bootcamp in mind or a language in mind, you're going to have a good idea of what type of device you're going to need, uh, especially uh, more lately, uh, more coding bootcamps are requiring Mac devices. And uh, for a lot of people, they haven't had a lot of experience with Mac, so it's important to just get experience with that. You can get a used Mac very cheaply. If it's, a, if it's a decision you're already pretty much committed to and just choosing a school, then it's a good idea to go ahead and get one as soon as possible because there are a lot of differences, especially when you start getting into things like keystrokes, typing shortcuts, and that sort of thing. Even the OS is very different. Terminal familiarity is also very great. I'm sorry, terminal familiarity is also really important. Uh, it's something that most people haven't had experience with and so you start getting into development uh, and another thing along the same lines is uh, GitHub or any kind of reversion technology. Bitbucket, you can choose your flavor. But uh, that is going to be something that might be a little bit more difficult to get into the meat of it just on your own. A lot of it requires you to work with somebody else and work in a group to really get some sort of the, the, uh, the uh, merge conflicts and things like that that you'll be dealing with. But just a general understanding of things like GitHub, how they work, the structure, the layout, dealing with things like pull requests. Um, and uh, working in the terminal as a part of that, you also, there are more tools out where you can use it more graphically in a GUI orientation, but getting an idea. So there are lots of great resources. I think GitHub even has a tutorial about understanding Git, but I'd encourage you to start learning that now and starting to get familiar with it because it's used in most programs very early on since if you are looking for a career, it's one of those things you can expect to use in, in every day of your job. Uh, beyond that, it's also good to continually uh, connect with your coding boot camps that you're considering. Talk with a bunch of them, start going through the interview process, but get an idea of what the languages and tools that they're going to be using and start uh, directing your, uh, your, your exercises and things that you're learning before joining the coding boot camp in that direction. So if it's a JavaScript school, start looking at the JavaScript beginner track in coding, uh, Code Academy. If it's a, uh, maybe a Microsoft stack or something like that, well, get familiar with that technology and also get familiar with a Microsoft device since uh, VB is still very much a Microsoft-only platform, although they did release a beta for Mac. Uh, but there's really not a whole lot that you can do wrong. A lot of it's getting familiar with the fundamentals of how these work. You know, when you get in the course, you're going to be challenged to work much deeper into these languages and get the actual differences between them. But uh, basic understanding of of computer science, how these uh, languages work together, uh, GitHub and those technologies, how your device works, getting some familiarization with the terminal, and most importantly, getting connected with the local community is, is amazing because it's something while you're in the course, you might not have a lot of time to do. Uh, beyond that, always ask for advice. Coding boot camps have lots of students coming in all the time. They get lots of feedback on what helps students prepare the most or what wasn't so helpful, and they can always direct you even before they send you over any sort of pre-work or something that you need for the course itself. Uh, if you have any questions whatsoever about any coding boot camps in general or digital crafts, either Houston or Atlanta, you can feel free to reach out to me at any time. I'd love to help you out. My name is Jason, and my email address is jason at digitalcrafts.com. But no matter what, even after you leave a coding boot camp, you're still going to be expected to do a lot of self-learning and growth and evolving as a, as a developer. So get those skills in now. Uh, start realizing if it's something that you enjoy teaching yourself those things. And uh, it's something that even uh, as you go through the coding boot camp and beyond, it'll be a valuable skill and it will help you in your career. Uh, so thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for listening. And we'll be back in another week.